What if there was a simple and easy way to protect your portfolio? Kind of like putting a seatbelt around it to protect it to the next market crash so it can go flying out the windshield. Would that help you sleep better at night? If you answer yes to that question, I think you're gonna love this video. In this video, I'm going to give you four ideas you might consider using to hedge or to protect your portfolio during the next big market crash. On average, these crashes are happening faster and faster. In fact, our last one happened just two years ago. And the one before that was two years before that. So they appear to be happening faster and faster. I've noticed that when they're happening, they seem to be more dramatic or they happen very quick. So how can you protect your portfolio during the next big market crash? Well, here's four ideas you might wanna consider. The first idea is to consider using ratio spreads to buy yourself some overall protection. And here you see a simple example to a similar trade that I'm in right now. With SPX trading for just under $5,100, we went to options expire in 109 days. Now notice that we sold three of those $3,800 put options. These options are really far out of the money. They're only gonna do anything if the market were to crash really hard. Now we sold three of those, but we bought five of the put options at the $3,650 strike price. So we own two extra options here, but we've sold ones that are $150 higher in strike price than the ones that we own. So how might that protect us? Here you see the performance chart of this position. Now this chart is as of right now. Now a couple of things I wanna point out to you here. This solid white line is what will happen to the P&L of this position if you held it through time and if it was at these various strike prices. For example, let's just go worst case scenario because we wanna be prepared for worst case scenario. See if we held this thing through expiration and stock was at that 36.50 strike price, we would see max loss. Remember, SPX is a very big stock. We've sold three of the $3,800 strike price options. We bought five of the 36.50. So if we were in this position through expiration and somehow the SP500 or SPX was right at 3650 expiration, these five options we bought, they'd be worthless. But the $3,800 options that we sold, they would have some value. We'd realize a max loss, if you look over to the far right, of around $46,000. Now obviously, we wouldn't let that happen wouldn't be in these through expiration. The reason why I'm showing you this chart really is because of this dotted line here. Because this dotted line tells you what will happen to the value of this position if the underlying stock were to go down in price. So how much would this position cost us? We see that it cost us around $850 for this position. She so said overall, if this stock, if SPX stayed where it's at, went up, or even came down, all the way down here to the short put option we sold around 3,800, we'd lose the value of the option if we held it through expiration. But what would happen if the stock market were to crash? What would the value of this position do during a stock market crash, a very fast crash? Today is April 28th. Let's just fast forward a couple weeks and see what would happen. Now I fast forward two weeks to May 12th. Notice that it doesn't look like a whole lot has changed here. But let's say that tomorrow the stock market were to crash. The were to crash hard. In fact, let's look down here at this chart on the bottom. Let's say the stock market were to crash 30% from the time we sold this put option to two weeks from now. The value of this position would have gone up to the point where we would have a realized P&L of over $26,000. If we were to only crash 20%, our profit on this position would be $6,400. Now, realistically, if the market were to crash 20 or 30% over a two week time frame, volatility would have exploded. So, realistically, I believe that our PL in this position would actually be a lot higher. Because remember, we're long five and only short three of the put options. But just keep in mind the three put options, they are at a higher strike price than the ones that we bought. But it's not much higher, it's only a $150 difference. So, our PL would explode if the market were to crash and volatility were to spike. But something you do wanna keep in mind here is this bottom line, which is theta. If everything stayed the same, overall this position would lose money every day due to time decay, because remember, we paid for this position when we first entered it. But this could be a nice way to hedge your account. And something to keep in mind is you don't have to stay in these three short $3,800 put options. If these got down to save a value of only a quarter per share, you close them out early and that would leave you with these five extra options. They probably wouldn't be able to do that until a lot closer to expiration, but closing out these short options early is something to keep in the back of your mind. But you see how this position can really protect you if the overall market would experience a strong downtrend. And what you want to do here is compare this along with the rest of your portfolio to see how many of these you would need to keep your portfolio at a position where if the underlying portfolio were to go down, your hedges could go way up in price and thus offset some or all of the portfolio losses. The next idea you might want to consider to hedge your account is just to buy some put options. And if you only need them in the event of a major market crash, you can buy them pretty far out of the money. For example, the market trading at around $5,100, you can look to buy, say, the $3,800 strike price put options. The odds of these being in the money expiration is just under 2.5%, so the odds aren't very high. So you need a major market crash in order for these things to go way up in value. And again, the time decay is pretty high. It's at almost 19 cents per share. But you're looking to buy these to protect you in the event of a major market crash. And these options expire again in 109 days. 
So what would that potential profit loss look like? Well, here you see the graph of that. Up here you have the higher prices of S&P 500, and here you see the price drops as you go to the left. Notice that the value of this put option would potentially go up as the underlying stock or the S&P 500 dropped in price. But notice it really doesn't go anywhere. In fact, it doesn't flip to a profit until way down here around $5,000 or $5,050. But at that point, the potential profit begins to go way up in price and go up very fast. In fact, if the S&P 500 were to drop to say $4,000, let's say tomorrow, you have a profit around $13,500 in this position. That's not really even taking into consideration the explosion of volatility that would happen if the overall market were to drop that much in just one day. If you look down here at the P&L row, if the market were to drop 30%, you'd be looking at a profit around $32,750 for this one put option if the overall market were to drop 30% tomorrow. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen. But you see the potential of how these put options can protect you in the event of an overall fast and sharp market decline. And something you might want to do is just consider buying some of these every month. Use some of the cash flow from selling other put options to help fund buying a certain amount of these every month. Figure out how much you would need in the event of a market crash to offset the losses you would incur in your overall portfolio and then just commit to buying those every month. You're just buying yourself some insurance. One of the things I get asked about a lot is, Randy, how do you stay delta neutral? Well, you want to look at the delta of your overall portfolio and then offset it with some corresponding option. For example, here, this is a small play account that I have. It's saying that my SPX delta is right at 3.5. So I'm trying to stay delta neutral. That really is pretty close to it. Let's say I was really stuck on a one to be right there around zero. Well, I would need to add some negative deltas in order to get that down to zero. And if I want to do that, get it from a positive delta down to around zero, I can look to buy a put option like you see here because this put option, if I buy it, as you see it has a negative delta. So that's one way to keep your portfolio more delta neutral. If your overall delta for your portfolio is positive, you just need to buy some or get into some positions that have a negative delta. A third way to give yourself some protection, which really isn't my favorite, but some people do like it, is to buy some call options in VIX. And here, looking at the weekly chart of the VIX, and overall, as you see in my lines here, we've been in an overall downtrend in the VIX over the past several years. But it really does appear to be kind of bottoming out here. This has corresponded to a decrease in the overall market over the past couple of weeks. Remember, this is the weekly chart. As you see here, last week we had a big crash in volatility. Several weeks before that, we saw sharp increases. Let's say you only want to protect yourself in the event of a major market decline. What could you do? Well, you can on a monthly basis look to buy some call options that are pretty far out of the money. I've pulled up the option chain for the VIX options that expire in 23 days or just under a month away. We can look to buy, say, the 30 call options. Those options are only going for about 17 cents per share. If you didn't want to be out of pocket the whole 17 cents per share, you can always look to do a debit spread. You could buy, say, the 30 call options and sell the 40 options, and that would greatly decrease your overall out-of-pocket cost. Now, again, you want to run some numbers to see how many of these you would need in the event of a major market crash. This is another idea you might want to throw in your head to see if it would potentially give you a nice hedge. The problem with buying call options in the VIX is that each expiration will respond differently to a major market crash. If the market thought that by the end of 79 days, things will be back to normal, then the 79 day call options, well, they may not spike up in price hardly at all. So just keep that in the back of your mind for using VIX to kind of give you a hedge. That's the reason why I don't really like using VIX to provide a hedge. Another way to buy a hedge is to consider buying some puts in one of the 3X levered ETFs. For example, here we're looking at the T-triple-Qs. This 3X levered ETF looks to provide three times the return on a daily basis of the underlying ETF, which is triple Q. And here we see that T-triple-Q is trading for around $55 per share. Well, you might consider buying, for example, some of the $30 put options. Those options are going for between $0.58 cents per share and $0.82 cents per share, so really not that much. And if the overall market were to experience a sharp decline, these should go way up in value. Or you can look to buy a call option option one of the inverse 3x levered ETFs. But just keep in mind when you buy these far out of the money 3x levered put options, time decay will happen really fast. For example, here we're seeing the time decay on these 145 day options is right at a penny per day. And that option doesn't expire for 145 days. But it is another way to potentially give yourself some protection in case the overall market were to experience a sharp decline. On all these different types of hedging, you want to run what if scenarios. For example, you don't want to buy some hedges in hopes that the market declined by 10%, they'd protect you against some losses. That may not happen, especially if you're buying far out of the money put options. But typically the hedges I use, they're there just in case of a very sharp, strong market decline, like what happened in March of 2020. So make sure you run an overall portfolio scenario. What would happen in the next market decline? Properly using hedges and securing your portfolio may help you to not only sleep better at night, but actually set you up to benefit or be able to buy some underlying stocks or sell some put options during the next sharp market decline. If you'd like to get an alert whenever I buy a stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Two of my favorite trading strategies 
strategies is to combine value investing with option trading. When combined, they can produce phenomenal results. To see how I use them together, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled Value Investing Plus Option Trading Equals You Win Big. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.